Okay, so uh, first thing, thank you very much, Piot, for having me here. Uh, it's a real pleasure after so long that we spoke so many times in Aula. Um, before I start, how many founders are here in the room? Can you raise up your hands? Great. How many of, uh, of you are bootstrappers? Great. How many are venture-backed or want to be venture-backed? Great. And how many of you are planning to sell outside of Poland internationally? Okay, great. So this is really helpful for me. Great. Okay, so I'll start. Yep. Great. So as I said, my name is Ariel Finkelstein. I'm very happy to be here. And I'm going to talk today about specific stuff. And hopefully, uh, afterwards, uh, we'll go much more into depth into sales itself. But we have a very big problem here in Poland. And I want to touch that today. We have a great uh, ecosystem here of founders, very smart people. We have a lot of passion here to build stuff. We don't have the infrastructure. And I'm going to talk about it today. And hopefully, we'll be building that together. But that's something which is very, very much missing. Uh, this is a presentation that is, uh, I cut several stuff from a presentation I give uh, on sales learning curve. In a second, I'll talk about it. But I want to talk specifically about Poland. There's a lot of knowledge out there that you can go and read and see stuff and anything you want to see about SaaS, you know, sales, whatever you want. But the real problem is at the end of the day, as founders, who fucking cares about who the sales guys in, the, in America? I need to know how to sell from here. I need to know what are the challenges and how to overcome them. And that's exactly the things I want to touch about today. And I'm going to talk about them. Um, the thing is, I'm going to talk about early stage, and as you can see here, uh, because majority of the guys are still in early stage startups. And the thing that you see here, sales learning curve, is one of the main things that is the most important things. Okay? I start selling before I start st uh, startups. Okay? That's the first thing I do even before I have anything in the startup itself. And in startups, it's very, very simple. We have a problem that we think we can solve in the world. We have an assumption that we know how to solve it, and we want as fast as possible to go and find if that assumption is working, yes or no. And in parallel, we go in two things, which is sales learning curve and product market fit. But the sales learning curve is always before and always continues, by the way, and we'll talk about it. But before I dive into it, I'll tell you a little bit regarding myself so you get to know me. Um, as Piot said, I'm Israeli. I, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, built quite a lot of companies. I started to sell cereal after the 10th company I built, and I love building early stage startups. Um, in Israel, I started in the beginning of 2000 to build startups, and at that point of time, we were very, very much similar to what you guys have here in Poland today. Uh, we have a, had a lot of technical guys that built companies, didn't know shit in business, and we sold our companies very, very early stage to the Americans because we didn't know how to sell and how to uh, build them. When I started my first startup in SaaS, nobody knew anything and nobody really helped each other, and we didn't have a good industry. And we had to build it from the beginning, and that's very, very similar to what we, we have here. About 15 years ago, I started to invest. I don't like investing, by the way. Uh, every schmuck can throw money on other people. I like building. So I built a method that was something that I really liked. I invest very, very early stages in companies and build it with very strong founders. I have today a group of my friends who are over 50 people all from all around the globe, from Australia, US, Canada, Israel, Europe. And all of us are serial entrepreneurs that build companies and are hands-on. And we come in and help companies and build them together with very, very strong founders. Uh, we have two arms of investments. One is into venture-backed companies and one is into bootstrap companies. After I sold my, the two of my uh, bootstrap companies uh, about six years ago, I decided to come into Poland uh, in order to see CE because there is a lot of stuff here. But whenever you open up a new mar go-to market, this is also related to sales, you have to come humble. You have to understand that you don't know the culture, you don't understand it. That's exactly why I came here, to learn about the culture here. And I met with majority of the VCs here. Majority of them didn't know shit. Uh, very, very early stage, like we didn't know shit, by the way, in the beginning. 
Um, I joined Forces together with uh, Innovo uh, founders. I really like them as people, and also they were very, very smart and willing to learn. And I joined in, in Innovo too. Uh, today I'm a venture partner there, I invest together with them. And I got lucky to join Forces with quite a lot of founders here that are today very good friends of mine, like Piot, uh, and really helping building those kind of companies. So just naming Zawi, I invested in 2020, and uh, Machek and Maya building the company together with them, Upacienta, a story doctor to build more growth ventures, quite a lot of different companies, doesn't matter what, but a lot of those those guys, each and every one of them had different experiences and different problems, and building that together with them was a lot of fun and is a lot of fun. And through that, I got to know a lot of the different issues here, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Before I dive into it, I want to talk a little bit regarding go-to-market because the majority of the people in the world just don't know what, what it is and don't understand the differences. So Poland is very strong in B2C, in lower-end lower SMB. That you have, that means that if I need any employee, okay, for these kind of things, for B2C sales, which is uh, uh, mainly serve, serve, and same thing with the SMB, no problem to find the guys here. The minute I go upstream, I get into a shitty situation. We don't have those guys here, okay? I don't have kind of executives, I don't have customer success guys that know how to sell, and again, there's maybe here and there guys, but not enough for an ecosystem to thrive. Not enough for a lot of companies to build here, and that's what we want to have here. In five, ten years here, we're going to have it. When I started here, nobody believed that uh, companies uh, will invest here, okay? All the other VCs. Today, it's very easy to see that a lot of those VCs are investing together with us and very interested in what's going on here. So, what's the difference between these go-to markets? Enterprise, mid-level, and SMB, and that's what I'm going to focus about today, which is touch sales, okay? When I told you that Bank of America, uh, TNT, uh, uh, all kinds of large corporates I, are my customers in, 20, in 2000, you knew that I was doing enterprise sales. Today, if I tell you that these guys are my customers, you don't know shit. They could have come and bought for $99 automatically without even talking to me, and that means that I'm not doing enterprise sales. That's a nice logo, but that's not enterprise sales. There's only two things that I really care about. Sales life cycle and average deals, okay? That's it. That means that when I go and do these kind of sales, we start from SMBs, okay? SMBs is very, very much transactional. These are very, very quick deals. These, we talk about hundreds of dollars, okay, in MRR, and that's it. Not more than that. And we need to be able to close them transactionally. One phone call, whatever it is, closing them, not too much bullshit in, in between, and many, many times we even do it through sales of the customer success. But then we go upstream into mid-level. Mid-level is before I go into the bullshit of an enterprise. Usually it's up to $50,000 ARR, okay? And below the $50,000 ARR, I'm usually in a situation that I don't have to get into procurement, legal, and all that different bull bullshit. On top of that, usually into enterprise, real enterprise, that starts at eighty dollars to $100,000 ARR, and then we go through everything. Those kind of guys we don't have here. Okay, very, very hard to find people that can do it. And it's very similar to what we had in Israel. So you have two different segments. In a second, I'll talk about it, but I'll say it now. One is you have the local guy that is selling to enterprises here. That is almost impossible to convert him into an international guy. Same story. Second uh, segment we have is the SMB guys. Converting them into mid-level is almost impossible also, okay? The transactional guys know how to do transactional sales. Getting them into a more sophisticated sale is not that easy, okay? And sophisticated sale is not understanding my product, it's understanding my customer and his business. Just to give you one example on that, so a sales guy in one of my companies talks to a customer today, and today is very, very harsh times, and that customer is an e-commerce CEO of an e-commerce uh, site. They're selling about 70 or $80 million in Q4, just before uh, all the sales. And the sales guy is talking to the CEO and doesn't fucking understand that this guy doesn't have time. The guy said, if you're solving my problem, I want to buy right now. If you're not, no, don't waste my time. 
the kind of person you want to have in these kind of settings is not the transactional person, and we don't have a lot of the guys that are not transactional. That's a very, very big issue today. And by the way, in Israel, we had the same thing. And one of the things that we did, we started to teach people. So I went all around with all the other CEOs that were selling like that, and we built an academy uh, just for ourselves. We took guys, and we had enough guys to teach them, and we taught them how to sell those kind of things, and we brought them into our companies. Here, currently, we just don't have enough, and hopefully, uh, I'm starting here to, to talk about it, but that we will build that kind of ecosystem because I believe we have to have it, and we can have it here, and we should have it. Okay, so what is a sales learning curve in a sense of understanding? Each, in each and every one of these different, different go-to markets, we start building our sales. There's a lot of different questions that we want to start answering for, okay, when we start, and in a second, I'll explain it. But at the end of the day, a majority of the founders, early stage, the first time founders, don't understand that this is strategic. Ma majority of them are fo focused on product market fit. We're product guys, we want to go, we want to understand it. And they don't understand how strategic is the sales. When we are doing the sales learning curve, the learning is the most important part. We have to learn very, very quickly, and we have to iterate all the time, very, very quickly, and discover. I'll give you a real example. So at Sawi, when we started to sell, and it was in the first month, um, everything was Polish, entire 100% of our sales was uh, Polish, and I needed to go straight away internationally because strategically we didn't give a shit about what's going on in the, the sales here. Getting them out of here was very much important to understand what's the persona we're going to sell into, and in the beginning you don't really know, okay, so a lot of the times you start uh, uh, selecting and understanding. Usually, again, I don't like to sell enterprise sales from day one. Just to understand, the higher you go, in uh, these kind of sales, the, uh, the more time it takes you to learn. Enterprise sales it takes you six months and above, and it's just ruining companies in day one. Only if I have to, this is, there is a segment that you have to sell enterprise, but it's a very small segment. Usually I like to start from bottom to top and sell much faster. My learning curve is much faster and, and I can change the stuff. And of course, from that I can sell much better to the enterprise. Um, and I, I just got now, I open up our class, uh, I really believe in giving back to the industry. I'm one of the founders of Microsoft Accelerator and Intel Ignite. And in Intel Ignite Munich, we just opened up our uh, fourth class. And there, all of them are enterprise uh, uh, companies, okay? And in their case, they, it's, you have to fight to get them down into the mid-level. But I can promise you, majority of the cases, you can find it. And we were able to find several of the companies to change it. And that really changes for the venture uh, ones uh, companies here, changes your ability also to raise your next round. Because if I take from uh, beginning till the end, and I want to do between 12 to 18 months to raise my next round, I have to show results. And results, and by the way, are not MRA or ARA, they are getting to results of understanding my go-to market. If I do enterprise, my ability to learn with that, that, that time frame is very, very limited and very, very hard. So that uh, founders usually don't understand how strategic it is. So when I go, and that's exactly what we did at Zawi, we already had a lot of the data from our current Polish customers. And by the way, selling it to Polish market is not a bad thing, but you, usually you stay too long. And in this case, we understood exactly what we wanted to do. Our customers were customers that we wanted to go in the States, which are because we wanted to get our next round from there. We knew exactly what kind of customers we were looking for. We were not looking for SMBs, we were looking for mid-level. We knew exactly the persona that we wanted to run because we had the data. And usually the easiest one, that's the majority of the startups start to sell from that, from their own connection. We had, of course, within our group a lot of connections, but that is not something which is sustainable and repeatable. But you start from it because it really helps you afterwards the minute you penetrate to go into it. And one of the most important things is to iterate fast. So we go on the phones, and in the first month, nobody fucking believes us. Machik's go on the phone, he's the CEO, he's, a, he's the CEO of the company, and he talks to them. And everyone doesn't believe us. It's a chatbot, and all the other players, it takes between three to six months to implement a, a chatbot, and maybe you'll get to 5% conversion. And in our case, we came and said, listen, Implement us, in one day, you get to 30% conversion without doing anything else. And it was, everyone said, huh? Can't be, you're fucking liars, okay? And you're from Poland, of course, so uh, we won't believe you because we're snobbish Americans and we don't believe anyone else from outside. And 
we heard it once, we heard it twice. Everything we record, by the way, everyone in the company has to listen to that, okay? From the developer to any, anyone else. And then straight away we understood that we have something good in our hands on one hand side, but we're not selling it correctly, okay? And that's the, the, the real fun of building startups. The minute you get that smack, Ariel, you're stupid. What assumption you had is bullshit. That's what you're looking for. But the thing is the next iteration is the most important thing. The majority of the founders don't do that majority of these cases, you don't run fast enough. We change our pitch very, very quickly into a pitch that, hey, we're going to give you this for free for seven days. Within the first seven days, you're going to get to 30% minimum on the first day, and you're going to get to 60% by the end of the seventh day. If we get there and then the seven days, do you have the budget, okay? And are you willing to commit to pay? And if yes, we sell it to you. By the way, if you're not, Fuck you, come back to us afterwards. And that's exactly what we did. And we started to sell very, very quickly. Second thing was that we were very much focused on starting to scale. When do I scale? How do I scale? Like, that's a very, very uh, hard thing. I don't have a lot of money. I didn't raise a lot of money. I have enough money in order to sustain myself. The bloody American guy that maybe I'll take is going to cost me too much. And when do I take guys? The minute I start answering for my initial go-to-market, that's when we, you take them. And strategically, again, we were able to do these uh, assumptions from beginning. Maya was in charge of getting us the leads from marketing, from SDR. She was doing all those things. And she was able to prove to us exactly how much each SDR is bringing us. And when we look at the, these things, by the way, everything is numbers, only numbers. I don't talk about any feelings or nothing. We have only numbers. And when we discuss things, it's with numbers. A sales guy, uh, SDR guy from our team was able to create, I don't want to uh, say exactly the numbers, but over $100,000 ARR, new ARR, every month. Very simple. By the end of the quarter, we already had already our numbers. We had too many leads for the amount of uh, salespeople that we had. And AR, by the way, the way we count it, is only after the first sales call in this mid-level kind of deals. So. The biggest problem is usually people don't understand how strategic it is, and then they give it to someone else to do it for them. You're not allowed to do it in all my companies. In the first six months, the founders are doing these things. It's a lot of innovation. Most of the people in the world live within a box. That's it. Very simple. They like the simple life. We as founders, we live out of the box. We create boxes. And when you go and open up and you go to market, and we do it, by the way, several times in the life of a company, in a second I'll talk about it, you have to be involved. In majority of my companies, between zero to one million dollars, we're in discovery phase. We're looking at the different go-to markets, we're even open to do different go-to markets. I'm very much against, by the way, doing two different go-to markets at the same point of time, only if I really, really have to, okay? But in majority of the cases, 99% of the cases, I discover within the first million dollars where I need to go. Between one million dollars to 10 million dollars, I am fucking laser focused on the one that I found, and I'm running with that to, as fast as possible to the 10. In parallel, as a founder, I'm starting to discover between the five to 10 million, I'm starting to work on discovery of the next uh, thing. Usually, I grow from SMB into mid level or from mid level into enterprise, but that next segment is the segment that's gonna take me from 10 to 100. Majority of the companies get stuck between the 10 to 100, and that's the worst companies for us as VCs, okay, or for as investors, and as founders, because then you get into the disalignment between founders and VCs, okay? Here you don't have that disalignment in a lot of the VCs because majority of the ones are smaller and are government-backed, so they don't really care, but that's going to change here very, very quickly. And then you'll see the disalignment, okay? Okay, so what do we build? And that's something which is very important. Every company in the world has these three pillars. Customer acquisition costs on one hand side, lifetime value on the other side, in the middle I have a go-to market that I have to start answering for. And you have a gazillion different questions that I want to start answering for, and I have to uh, answer all the questions there. And I'm not sure in the beginning what market I should be selling to, if I'm in the US, uh, yeah, UK, whatever it is, uh, how large the companies am I uh, going after, what is my sales life cycle, what is the average deal, blah, blah, blah. I write to myself all those different questions and I start answering them. By the way, you don't have to take pictures, I'll share it with you, the presentation, you can uh, enjoy from it, okay? But the main thing is that the, from 
ability to build it, this is exactly the number thing. You have to write down everything on the numbers. So we start from the beginning, okay? Lead generation. I can do lead generation for many, many different uh, segments, okay? SEO, SCM, email marketing, approaches, whatever you want, blah, 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 events, whatever you want, you do those things and you validate them. But you have to validate them correctly because afterwards you have bullshit discussions internally in the company. So I'll give you an example for one of my companies. Um, this is a company also in uh, the HR world. We started to go uh, into sales. In the beginning, we didn't know who we were going to sell to, okay? So we, we started from mid-level, uh, and, uh, and we did also uh, SMB. And we said the segments are also there. We went only to American companies, but we didn't know if we were going to be able to talk to the CEO, uh, founder, CTO, founder, uh, to a team leader, to HR manager, to recruiter, whatever. We were able to see very, very quickly in that company that our conversion was much, much better into the founders in, in the uh, uh, SMB segment and in the middle of the guys into the team leaders, which uh, in the States worked much, much better for us. And that enabled us very much uh, quickly to focus on these guys into to penetrate in, uh, into them. The discovery of this machinery is the most important thing as startups, okay? Just to understand, when we have say about uh, a machine that works, this is this. That means that when afterwards I go into the B round usually and C round in my companies, I can show you exactly, you put $40 million, I know exactly what's going to come out on the other side. Okay, and that's the beauty of it. So that means that when I get to an A round and a CEO talks to me in an A round, the only thing he talks to me about is numbers, okay? Numbers on his go-to-market and the ability to show them. And that's exactly, by the way, what we did uh, at Zawi, and we had uh, that specific stuff. So the sales themselves, in the beginning, as I said, this is innovation, you have to do it by yourselves. And the biggest problem is that data is not going from one to another, okay? And that's a very, very big issue. That means that everyone in the company needs to, to understand. Our product changes, okay? When we uh, uh, launch uh, ourselves into this kind of sales into the US, we discover very quickly that what we thought is the value is not what they understand as value. Okay? What we thought is the ROI is not what they thought is the ROI. And one of the biggest challenges going from here and selling into the US is that when I do it, a lot of the founders here are afraid. Afraid from the English, afraid from the American, afraid of many, many different things. And I love founder sales in the beginning, by the way which is the best thing because you learn very, very quickly. We afterwards, of course, need to bring sales guys in, but you should not be afraid. You should be very much uh, uh, into selling what you believe in. And again, I'll touch it uh, afterwards. There was a question here about uh, can you sell, can you learn to sell? Majority of the founders have been working with hundreds, thousands, and much more founders. I can tell at the end of the day, there's a very small segment of founders that cannot sell. Okay, majority of them at any point of time can sell and can do the stuff, some better, some worse. But at the end of the day, a good founder is the best innovator into the processes and he's the guy who can change it. And even the guys that can sell, and had several of my companies that wasn't able to sell, with a good person that was selling and they were doing that jointly, it worked very, very well. I'm going to jump and don't have uh, enough time to, to go over all the presentation, so I want to touch uh, also the specific stuff for him. Okay, when we do the sales learning event, when you guys start to sell, majority of the guys are focusing on the wrong things. Uh, I have a company in Intel Ignite that we, as I said before, they were focused on one thing and one thing only for the next round, to get $1 million in ARR. That's not a KPI, especially in the beginning. There's only one word that is important, that's the learning. Okay, the learning is the most important thing. If I go on a call and don't come of it, out of it in sales, I don't freaking care in the beginning. The only thing I care about is did I learn or not? And I'll give you a good example of it. Okay, so on one of the first calls that uh, uh, um, uh, Machik had, and that was uh, very funny to see, he was on the phone. He knew that the customer is not going to buy. And by the way, I'm sure all of you guys, if you did sales, you had that kind of experience, okay? You talk to someone, he's on the line, you see him, you see this schmuck is not going to buy from you. And you know what you usually do? You continue. You talk and blah, 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 and maybe you'll say, maybe you're not. That's the wrong thing to do. Whenever I had that, I stop and I say, dude, I'm not going to sell to you. Let's stop here. Now I'm a founder. I'm talking to you. Please help me. What did I do wrong? Where am I wrong? Help me. 100% of the cases they do. 
and they answer you the right question on how they think about it, okay? And you learn from it. So the worst thing to come out of the call is not that you didn't sell, but the worst thing is that you didn't learn. And that's, again, I'm talking about early stage when you build these, these kind of segments. That's the quickest way to understand what is your right pitch, what is the right way to sell. Majority of us don't have good messaging and positioning. In Zawi, we had a very bad one in the beginning because we didn't know. That's one of the things that we had to build in the first month that we did it. Second thing is the majority of us, and I've seen it too many uh, times here in Poland and in CE right now, don't fucking know anything about numbers. Especially in the beginning, we don't have a CFO, we don't have anyone from accounting, and the person that is in charge usually is either the CTO, CEO, whatever it is. And when I see uh, MRR from POCs, that real person is off, okay? The difference between bookings, revenues, ARR, MRR, cash in the bank, all the different stuff, you have to know the stuff, okay? At the end of the day, when I do MRR or ARR, that means it's really recurrent. No bullshit in between. If I didn't sell to you and you can go up and you have an opt out, that's still not MRR, okay? Be very clear with your numbers. Don't lie to yourselves first, okay? And the ability to have the right numbers in front of you is very crucial. Just to understand one thing, when in order for us to learn first, uh, fast and change things fast, we have to have everything in place. And in a second, I'll talk about then we need to have the right processes and we need to know what is an MQL, what's an SQL, what's a uh, sales call, all of our funnel. Very, very clear definitions because otherwise our sales guys don't know what to put within this, uh, the CRM and we have to be very clear with them to put in the CRM. But then we analyze it and we need to be able to analyze it correctly. Majority of the guys don't do that. Second thing on what we're talking about here, when we go into it, a lot of the people don't know how to build these kind of companies. That means that my uh, board is pissed off. Why don't they, I, I sold this month $5,000 uh, MRR and next month I'm only at $5,500. That's not the goal. The goal is to learn. I need, the minute I learned, that's when I start to build myself. It's not scale, by the way. A lot of guys are talking about scale at that point. Uh, scale is much, much later in the company. But I start building my go-to market. I'll jump for him, sorry. So I spoke about in the learning. Uh, I want to um, just move ahead. As I said, like the main thing is go out, start selling. You have your assumptions. Go check them out, but change quickly. Majority of you guys don't check and uh, change quickly enough. And by the way, our persona that we sell into changes. Our, uh, our ability to maneuver ourselves correctly and the way we sell changes. Just to give you an example, um, the first speaker here spoke about 2023. Uh, I forgot his name, I'm sorry. Um, it's very much correct that now in Q4, the majority of my work right now is uh, planning for 2023. It's a freaking hard year to do it because nobody knows what's going to happen next year. This year has been very hard to also to maneuver within. But a lot of industries that has already suffered from that. If we're talking about e-commerce, if we're talking about HR, we're talking a lot of different uh, industries that are harmed. And at the end of the day, I, if I move in inertia and I have already $5 million in ARR and I'm selling, but I stay the same way, I'm going to lose the game. Our market is shifting all the time. I need to shift stuff. I have a company in my portfolio, it's a billion dollar company, and we're selling it to very harsh markets, okay? By the way, all of you, if you're doing B2B sales, you're in harsh markets at the end of the day. Sales life cycles are much longer, our average deals are going lower, our ability to sell in a sense in the same stuff, it's, it's hard. And you have to take it into consideration all your different things for planning for next year. But in this specific case, our market is hard. And we were able to see that already in mid-year, that it's going to be that way. And we changed both our go-to-market, we changed also our sellings. We did a lot of different things that we, we had to change. What I'm trying to explain, this is something that is all the time in a company. Majority of the founders don't go upstream and look at it all the time. That's the, the strong guys know how to do it and do it all the time. I want to talk specifically on here. So I spoke about this in the... Polish sales guy that we have today, this has to change. We have to be able to start building it. By the way, one of the strongest things that we have here is our ability to fight against our competition. We can do things much, much more cheaper than our American competition, but when we go upstream, it starts co costing us a lot. Today, we start taking all the American guys. The minute I need to account executive, I go out of here. I need a customer success guy that knows how to sell. I need to get out of here. 
all that is a very, very big issue for us, and we pay a very, very big price for it. Second thing, all these guys that we do have here are the SMB guys that they can do transactional, but when they go on the phone, they don't really understand the customer. Maybe I'll explain, I'm not sure all of you understand it. When we go into a discussion with a customer, we are able to take him hand by hand and really understand his business. A transactional guy doesn't fucking give a shit about his business. All he wants is to sell his product to this guy. Hey, I have this TV at my home. Hey, the same TV, you know these kind of sales guys? That's what you, we have here today, majority of our guys. The kind of guy that we need is the sophisticated guy. When we do enterprise sales, by the way, we really understand the customer. Not in a sense of understanding only his business, okay? But understand the person that I'm selling into, my champion, I know exactly what is his goals for 2023. I know exactly what is his compensation for 2023. I know exactly all the politics internally, and I meet today, I come back to meeting him face to face because I need to do that in enterprise. That's not something that we have here today and the ability to do it, and that's one of the challenges that we have. Majority of us, I don't care about enterprise, by the way. Here we need to have a mid-level tier, and that's what we need to start building. And if we had that, by the way, we would have done a lot in very, very good companies. Another thing that we see, I see it a lot, first thing in founders, they're harming themselves, we are too humble. A Polish founder talks from down here to the American customer. Same thing, by the way, he talks from down here to the American VC. Very, very bad. A lot of times that we have companies here, and I've seen companies that are doing much better than an American company, he's going to the VCs and talking to him, and he's from down here. And that's the kind of language. We're using the wrong words also. You should not be, able, you should not be ashamed about yourselves in any situation, and we have good stuff going out of here. And when I talk to a customer from the U.S., I'm very much proud of what I'm doing. And I'm not afraid, by the way, to say that I'm Israeli and I'm selling to uh, Arab countries. And I'm not afraid to, to sell to the U.S. Same thing, I'm not afraid to, as a Polish founder to go and sell to the American guys. And I don't give a shit. I have the good solution that solves your problem. If it doesn't solve your problem, don't die, buy from me. But this is uh, a good solution. Another thing is that we don't see enough chutzpah. I don't know if you know the term from Israeli, but that's the first thing I do with my companies. Uh, I, I have them inject with uh, chutzpah. A lot of times, uh, the first thing that every founder that I worked with was if a customer told him no, he took the no as no. Israeli takes a no as a yes. Okay, let's go, let's continue. We have that chutzpah, we run afterwards, we don't give a shit, and that's exactly what you guys need to do because at the end of the day, too much passiveness, you pay the price for. We don't have time for BS, okay? People that start bullshitting us, that's the worst thing that we can have. Someone spoke about the English here. English is important. I have in my companies everything in English. By the way, I prefer uh, when we do international companies, I do a flip and I uh, only invest in American companies. I don't like the kind of companies we have here in the sense of uh, uh, the Polish companies, the entities. It's very, very hard uh, for international companies to, to do it. Again, this is not in 100% of the cases, but uh, if, uh, if I take a venture-backed company to the US, it's an American company, okay? And the thing is, English is crucial. Every founder has to know to talk English, and as the person here said, you don't need to be 100% in it. But you do need to feel comfortable with what you're saying, and the other side needs to understand you. And at the end of the day, I had many Israeli guys that were selling from Israel, that their English was really poor, but okay enough to sell, and they were selling in tens of millions of dollars, okay? No problem. You should not be afraid, and a lot of the founders here are too afraid of it. Forget about being afraid, work about it in the English, and go sell. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about specific mistakes that I'm seeing here. Um, Polish customers. Should I have Polish customers? Yes or no? Okay. I start everything. I want to sell internationally. So... Polish customers is good for the beginning, but you need to th uh, think strategically. Where are you going afterwards? If I start here, how do I get internationally? So the first thing that I'm looking at, I want to have customers that can work with me. Uh, 
and I can uh, iterate my product together with them quickly, and they are re very relevant for the segment I'm going uh, outside. By the way, if you sold here in Poland, it doesn't mean shit that you're going to be able to sell in the States. Here, a lot of the companies don't know shit about other solutions, and we don't have a lot of competition, okay, from the US. When I go to the US, suddenly I have all my competition in front of me, okay? So, but that's not something that diminishes selling here. You can sell here. What really worked for us uh, in several of my companies here was we sold into international brands here. Okay, so I had an international name. So when I spoke with the American guy, I told him, listen, I'm, t I'm selling to L'Oreal. He didn't know what L'Oreal was, which one it was the Polish guys, okay? Uh, and that really worked uh, well. Second thing, selling here into an uh, um, enterprise uh, account that has thousands of employees and is a good enough brand can be also good. That helped us in one of my companies that we were selling into an enterprise uh, abroad, okay? It was an Israeli account. And they wanted to know that we can service them and we have the ability to service with tens of uh, thousands of employees. And we said, hey, go talk to this guy. He has, I think it was 5,000 employees and everything and should be enough for you. And really helped, by the way. Well, they needed also other stuff, by the way, but that was very, very helpful. So what I'm trying to say, local uh, stuff is okay. Majority of the guys stay here too long. That's the problem. Don't go out fast enough. So don't waste too much time here. If you're an international company, go out very, very quickly and do your stuff. Next thing is POCs. Majority of the companies are doing bullshit in POCs. POCs is something you want to get rid of. We do them just because we have to do them on day one, okay? We should not be doing POCs if we don't have to do them, okay? So whenever we open up a, good, a new market, I go to the States, I go to Europe, or whatever it is, whenever I open up a new segment, I go from banking into telco, whatever it is, these guys want to check us. What I do instead of uh, POCs, whatever I can do, I do opt out. Uh, does anyone uh, not know what opt out is? Okay, so an opt-out deals usually that I do. I give a month free, a month that you can uh, go out whenever you want, but you're uh, obliged for another 11 months if you're not opt opt opting out with this, uh, the first month. The thing is, that works very, very well in specific segments, not always in all the segments. You have to get into the situation that you get out of POCs very, very quickly. That's, again, you pay a very, very big price for the venture-backed companies, by the way. You get screwed by these POCs. Okay, a lot of the time I close the POC, then afterwards I close it incorrectly because there's no definition of time, how much time until you deploy it, how much time till you buy from me the next buy, and do you have the budget for that? All the different things, there's nothing a continuation. That's why I have, I have the opt-out. Everything is set from beginning. Everyone knows exactly the stuff. I don't need to sell again and again. One thing that is uh, very important, gross margin, okay? Majority of you guys, I don't know how much you know what's going on in the world. Uh, here in Europe, we're still in La La Land. A lot of companies are, don't understand how bad the situation is. We still don't have uh, the amount of firing that we had in the States and in Israel and everything. But the gross margin became the most important thing today in companies. Okay, So in 2021, it was growth, 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 and I don't care how much you're losing. Now it's how much you can create in a low amount. And this is something that all of you guys have. You have that ability. Our gross margin is usually much lower than our competition. You need to be smart about that. But that means, and that's why this is so important that we have a community here that thrives and grows. If we had it, and we had these kind of sales guys, account executive, and all the rest, we'd be able to create here so much uh, value before we go outside and have uh, 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 sales guys from the States. And that gross margin is the main thing for venture-backed companies, by the way, that the thing that you want to show in the next round. For an American guy to create in the beginning, everything is very much expensive, okay? Uh, my sales guys cost a lot. Uh, all of my operation costs a lot. You guys have the luxury to go to an American VC afterwards and show that your goes much and much, much better, okay? And you need to focus on that. Um, I'm going to jump. I'm sorry. I'm just I see people here already uh, very, very tired. So I'm going to jump to one last thing. Um, okay, two things. One is the funnel. Majority of the founders in the beginning don't have a good funnel. Now, one of the biggest mistakes is you think that the funnel is the same funnel. Every company has a different funnel. And the definition of the stages you need to define it, and you're going to change them uh, several times within this process, okay? And 
just to give you an example, when I want to move from step to step in the funnel, there has to be rules how you can move from that step to the other step. Uh, the big, uh, biggest mistake is a step from sales into customer success. The minute I move from sales into customer success, and it's always customer success is divided into two stages. One is onboarding of the customer, and then it's an ongoing. But there is a definition to move from sales into customer success, and there's a very clear definition how do I move from onboarding to ongoing. But that has to be in, in built by you guys. And a sales guy in my companies that doesn't give the information, he can't move into the customer success. I'll give you a good example. One of my companies, we do land and expand. We land in companies in $35,000 uh, ARR. And usually with, within four months, we get to $80,000 ARR. Okay? But the sales guy, when he closes the $35,000 uh, ARR, he has to have in his CRM exactly, is this customer a potential enterprise? Okay? Or he cannot grow. First thing, so if I don't have that, you can't move to customer success. Second thing, you can grow to 80, 100, 100 you have to show exactly what is uh, uh, um, the potential, and you have to show what needs to be done in order to get there. Without all these different things, you can't move ahead. You need to define these things. If you haven't done that, you're going to lose the game. Um, I'm going to jump here, same thing, uh, okay. Funnels, when we look at them, and the majority of the guys don't know how to look at numbers, okay? We look at three things in our funnels which are very crucial. Time, conversion from step to step, okay, and money sign, okay? These are very, very crucial stuff. So I'll give you a good example. In one of my companies, we had uh, a problem of movement from SQL into sales, uh, uh, call sales. And we saw this conversion went down there. And we were able to uh, see that straight away because we saw that uh, in the time frame, the minute we didn't have the conversion, also it took us much longer to start closing deals. And the problem was that people, our guys, were not jumping straight away on the customer. You have to jump straight away on the leads coming in. And they took their time. You usually over 72 hours, you just got back to the customers. That's how we lost them. But we were able to see it straight away. When you do these kind of things and you monitor the conversion from step to step, and you have very clear definition, time from step to step, and money from step to step, you always find where are your problems, and you'll see them straight away. The kind of sales guys that we need in the beginning. Okay, we usually don't know our quota. We don't know our, how, how to sell. The people that are asking, okay, how much are you gonna give me in commission are the guys that you don't want at this point. They have to be able to be with different hats and they have to be able to sell correctly together with you. Majority of the cases, it's very, very hard to find these kind of guys. I won't dive into it. Uh, I just don't want to, uh, people here seem a little bit, to, you need to, to sleep. So I want to finish with one thing. This is very, very important for a majority of you guys who are doing sales. Sales calls are never demos. Uh, if you call them demos, it's a really bad thing, okay? We don't do demos. People that do demos are in professional, okay? What do I mean by that? When you say demo, it's again and again the same thing. Majority of the guys are doing again and again. Nobody fucking cares what you do. Nobody, okay? The only question is for the customer is, do you solve my problem, yes or no? That's all he cares about. And majority of the guys that would do demo, ah, oh, here we have this and this and this and this, hey, this is our product, this is the stuff, all the different stuff. Nobody fucking cares, okay? So w this is not, never called a demo, we do sales calls. And in the sales call, it divided into three. The first stuff is, be well, before that you have to come prepared, by the way. You have to take your 10 minutes, whatever it is. The worst thing, by the way, is the founder saying, hey, what does your company do? Uh, what's your role in the company? All the different stuff. The first thing we do in sales is create trust between you and me. You're my customers. I build trust together with you. Building trust is by showing that I care about you, okay? Having that kind of empathy in the sense that I know what your company does. I know what your role is. I don't know what are your problems. I don't know what are the goals of the company for next year. And I don't know in relation to what we do and how can I help you. And the right questions are the questions that show that you understand. You're in the market. You're a market thought leader and you can build that uh, things. And that's what we do in the initial in the call. Where do you usually the uh, guys here get stuck is in this discovery phase. They don't ask questions. And that's the main thing that I want to come out of here today and that you understand when you do sales and just on that side of making sales in the beginning is that people here come from here 
to the American guys and then they look at them up here, which means that when the customers start talking to them, the customer is taking them hand by hand. And I've seen it almost 100% of the times and I, which I had to change it. And that means that the customer is coming and saying, hey, I need this and this and this. Great. I'm a market thought leader. And when you build that kind of a trust, by the way, with the customer, you walk him hand by hand through the entire process. And he knows that you're able to understand, not your product, by the way. Nobody freaking cares about your understanding of your product. I understand your market. I even throw names of my customers or whatever in the stuff of how you're right now harmed. And I know how to solve that for you. And I know how to implement my product for you to, to, to build it. And so when I show you what I do in the demo part of the thing, I don't show you my product. That's not what I do. I show you how I'm going to solve your problem. So in discovery, all I care about is discovering your problem. And in the demo, I only think about how I'm going to solve your problem. And at the end, I'm very much aggressive on closing deals. And again, that's a different part of the difference between farmers and hunters. We have more farmers uh, today that I've seen here than hunters, okay? Especially in the guys that are international. I'm not talking about the local guys here. We have a lot of very good local guys in just join IT. We have great guys that are doing uh, the hunting, okay? And very, very good guys. The problem is, shifting them into the, America, uh, the uh, international way of selling, there we have more, and that's what I've seen in the uh, farming. Because we, have, we do have, as I said, customer success SMB guys that are selling very, very nicely and have it in other companies of mine that are doing very, very nice uh, uh, work there. So I don't want to continue too much here. This uh, last thing is for the VC guys between you guys. Whenever I invest in seed, pre-seed, I put 18 months for myself to get to the A round. They don't have a lot of time, and the luxury of uh, Bootstrap is that we don't have investors, and our only investor is one guy. I don't know if you know him, but his name is our customer. He's a very, very nice guy, we love him, and all we care about is that we're profitable on him, and that's what is, uh, sustains us. In venture, we have a knife on our neck all the time, and we need to get to the next round. Majority of the founders here are doing too many stakes, and it's not only here, all around the globe, um, and not planning for the next round. So the, for the VC guys, okay, your planning on these sales points are crucial. You're going to lose your company, in a sense, of percentage in your company, because you didn't plan correctly. Understanding how 2023 is going to uh, uh, change your market, going to change your sales uh, cycles, going to change things that for you to get to the next level is very crucial. That's why if you can go lower stream, in your market, it's very, very good, okay? See that you can really learn fast and then start growing from there if you can. Guys, thank you very much. Hopefully this helped you guys. Thank you, thank you. Uh, great presentation, great speech. Uh, okay, uh, maybe it's time for the questions. Uh, hi, thank you very much for very, very insightful keynote. Uh, I have a question because uh, I love that you ask everybody to be hard on numbers. Uh, just a short introduction, user.com, we are going up on the market. So we started with SMBs. Currently, we, we are at the mid-market, but we want to uh, address uh, the enterprise market. Yeah, uh, We have those numbers. We have our current customer acquisition cost. We have our current LTV, uh, but those numbers are like numbers infected by the our history uh, like our average revenue per account per user is not average re revenue per per account per user as we want to address so how to like calculate not to be uh, treated as a moron because it's like our current uh, average monthly average revenue per user is like $700, yeah? But I want to make it in one year double or triple it, yeah? So, so like the ma math is totally different because of timing. Maybe you have some understanding, like some tips how to address that problem. Okay, I'm not sure I understood you 100%, then correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Usually we have blends 
of our numbers in a sense that I have SMB and mid-level and I count them together as a a averages. And I'm guessing that's what you meant, is it correct? You blend between the two? Uh, when you say 700, how much in the SMB? What's your sales life cycle and what's your average deal in SMB? Okay, so, so only like SMB. Cohort, cohorts, uh, customers. I don't have cohorts, I have only, okay. Let me explain one thing. When I do these three different go-to markets, I don't freaking uh, have uh, them together. By the way, my sales guys sell only one thing. I don't have any sales guys sending to different go-to markets. It's the most stupid thing to do, okay? So when I go into these kind of markets, your SMB numbers are your SMB numbers, only SMB. So I have a very clear definition of what is my SMB. Okay, so that means if you're an SMB in my CRM, you're my, in, underneath SMB, and I know exactly my sales like an SMB is two weeks. Uh, my average deal there is three hundred dollars MRR, and I know my SMB. My mid level is X. I know exactly what it is, and that's it. My sales guys, if it, if it comes a customer in SMB, he's he's the guy who touches it. Uh, SMB guy in my company is not allowed to touch mid level or enterprise accounts. He ruins them. Okay, and so now if I want to grow up. I need to understand from the stuff. So usually when I go up, I understand, first thing, if, if you're already selling mid-level, uh, I understand my mid-level very well. And I start selling it by myself, not getting my sales guys doing it. Usually I do it by myself, I like to do it. But again, I don't know your organization, how you do it. And I start playing with it. The beauty of how we do it, by the way, uh, you know, I'll give you a real example. I have one of my, another unicorn of mine. Um, we started to sell $5,000 ERA in the beginning. All of my sales guy in the US, it was a New York based team, they were selling the $5,000. And we saw that there's no business there for us, we had to grow. And we believed that we can sell them at 30K initially, that was the initial penetration, that was our mid level. All of our sales guys, we gave them the leads, they were not selling. And you know what they were not selling? They didn't believe that they can. That's one of the things I see here a lot. People just don't believe. A lot of my sales guys, when I said I'm moving for 5K and above, they just don't believe that you can. Why, why is uh, this the stuff? And when I say to them that in one of my companies that I built in the beginning, I took on the same fucking product that people were paying me $350 MRR, they were paying me afterwards $45,000. And the only thing that changed, I gave them customer success. That's it, just to help them. That thing, you need to build that trust. You need to go by yourself, do that sales. Now, the thing is, you start with lower numbers usually, okay? Uh, in that case, by the way, the company, we sold at 30,000, and very quickly, we got to 60,000, 80,000, and 150, and everyone was shocked. That, that's the fun of building these kind of things. Your product, the same kind of product, by the way, can be sold more, and but you discover it step by step. So when you took the, the, the numbers that you had in the sales cycle, you Took, you take the, uh, the higher one, okay, the mid-level, you analyze what you currently have, and you put what you think you can take above it, okay? What is my offering above it? What do I give? Why should you pay me more, okay? And how do I uh, position it? And then I try and look, and the first thing you want to look is to get the smack. You're the most stupid guy, you don't know shit, and that's what you're looking for to get from the customer. And you want to hear, and you want to hear from him, uh, what will he pay you, those 30K, whatever it is. Does it make sense to you? Uh, does answer or you had another question from it? No. Sure? Okay. okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, hello. Um, we are the company that, uh, by the way, we are uh, selling 70% of our revenue to Israel. So, uh, <laughs> so we know. I'm sorry we, to hear we, the Israelis are uh, so fast. We know what Hutzpah is. So, uh, and, and but, but my question is about the um, about the sales and, and the learning curve. So you mentioned that in, that in Poland we don't have uh, um, in uh, people skilled enough uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to address the the mid level and the, and the enterprise level sales. I mean, in global, I mean, we don't have enough of those guys. Yeah, we yeah. Have so, so a little bit here, a little bit there, but so, not enough for our ecosystem. Yeah. So is there any help for us? What what would you recommend to the company? that wants to sell in this, in, this, uh, in this market, yeah? We're eating shit, that's exactly why I'm here. We're eating shit, <laughs> all the companies like yourself, we need to go and they take guys that are much more expensive outside and we do fucking mistakes. You know how much it costs me to do a mistake on a sales guy? Not half a million dollars. Okay, a sales guy in the States that we take in uh, uh, mid-level and enterprise today pay between 150 of the cheapest, okay, to 250, 300 base. base. 
Okay? Uh, even today. And by the way, salary doesn't change. So pay it, pray, yeah? Uh, no, but we try to do... Again, whoever tells you it doesn't do mistakes in HR is a fucking liar, okay? We all do mistakes. The thing is, the mis what I'm trying to say in our stage, when we do that mistake, it doesn't cost me those 250K on double twice, usually I take two guys uh, selling. It costs me much more, especially because I lost that time. And in a venture-backed company, I lost millions of dollars. And it usually takes me at least half a year to learn that I'm not doing the right, I'm not on the right path. So that's why I'm here and saying to all of us, we need to build this ecosystem because if we had it here, we would have been able to run our fa companies much faster, much more healthier, and we need to take responsibility to do it. And between us, I think every uh, founder here has to start thinking how we can help the industry here. And that's, by the way, what worked in Israel. For us. And yeah. right now, you are suffering, and I, I fully agree. That's uh, a problem. Uh, this is true. What, 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 because we are, we are dealing with Israeli startups, so, uh, so we see the difference that there is an ecosystem, there is a, a grant, there, is a, there are VCs that have global um, relations. Yeah. And our customers start to say global from the very beginning. Yeah? So uh, here, we do have companies that want to go global from beginning, um, but it's very hard for them. And that's exactly what we do. And again, in Innova, that's exactly what we do. I help a lot of those kind of companies, and several of them are here and everything, um, that in order to sell internationally. But it's not easy to do today here, because first, we don't have a lot of founders. And who freaking cares about VCs, okay? Founders, they're really successful, sold internationally, and know how to do it. We are still very, very, even the guys that are doing it are in the midst of doing it. That has to change, and again, one of the main things is also help each other, talk about it, have groups, and hopefully uh, you'll take it from here and go do it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, perfect presentation, by the way. Fucking perfect, as you <laughs> said. Uh, just a simple technical question. If you do, do you do a lot of cold calls, and like if you do, like, how do you cold call somebody from USA, from Poland, like, through WhatsApp, or just, are you getting American phone number? Okay. Um, first thing, in order to answer you, uh, there's no copy-paste in business. There's never uh, cold calls that work always in, in every company. So, I have companies that cold calling is working for us. I have companies, it's irrelevant. That's uh, what I'm pushing every company in the beginning. Go discover what works, what doesn't work. So that's the first thing. To tell you that it works always, that's bullshit. Okay? In my companies that we do do cold calling, um, it's mainly uh, in a way that we have uh, very, very strong guys that are able to communicate well very quickly. So the kind of people I like there are people that are very transactional and understand other people very, very quickly. Okay, because you have those 30 seconds to build it. And those kind of guys are very hard to find. It doesn't matter where, by the way. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing, just to, to explain the, the kind of people. Uh, system of using and everything. So again, uh, as someone was talking about hours here in Israel, by the way, we have uh, other problems. Sunday is our working day. Friday is not a working day. We work like crazy, okay? We do the Elon Musk, we don't care about. 24-7, that's what you do, you work those hours. System-wise, we always use American numbers, okay? And I call from Israel. I call. I had also uh, teams in the Philippines that I built uh, for my companies. We don't care that, but always I want the American, in the, especially in the beginning, to to, to think that this is a, a, an American company. I don't care about the uh, accent, by the way. In America, they have a lot of guys with different accents, okay? Especially go to the Valley, <laughs> majority of the guys are there with accents uh, from other countries, and that's not a problem. The problem is, again, if they see it from abroad, it's a problem. By the way, a lot of my companies here, I ask them to change their LinkedIn to America, okay? So they're not in Warsaw, they're in the US, we're an American company, that's what we do. Very, very common, by the way. Um, and that's, um, I think, uh, for regarding for cold calling, I can tell you another point there, that the thing is, right now, we have a very big problem in lead generation, in B2B, especially going upstream. Okay. Events are going down next year. I don't know how much you know it, but all the corporates today in the States and other countries that are not EU uh, with the La La Land, uh, they are diminishing right now all the expenses, everything. So 
they're going to very selective events. That means that my customers are not coming to those kind of events, a lot of them. So the fighting on how to do lead generation is becoming harder and harder. So your question, again, I'm not talking about specific on cold calling, but all the different ways to uh, generate, they have much less uh, time to care for you both an email, LinkedIn approach, whatever it is. We need to be very aggressive today in order to do it, and you need to change your, and shift your way of mind on focusing on how you really change your pitch from, there is a scale, nice to have, to have to have. Today we have to be close as much as possible to the have to have. Majority of us are much closer to nice to have. And that becomes a very big issue when we approach on the first, when we do outbound. And you have to be able to be able with a pitch of a have to have. Thanks. Pleasure. Uh, okay, another question? Maybe I just uh, add two of them. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot. Hi, uh, I'm a sales guy and uh, you talked about uh, those lacking sales galleys in, in, in Poland. So I'm just asking, how do we produce them? How do you produce them? Like, what, what do we can do? We can discover the buying process of the companies or how to be a sales guy to, to, which is selling to enterprises. First thing, yes, uh, um, I'm very happy you're a sales guy. If you want a, a job in one of my companies, you're more invited to sell, uh, send me information. Uh, look, at the end of the day, we are taking today sales guys in my companies from here, and we're starting to do that. We are teaching them, but it takes time. What doesn't work and didn't work in the past for us, and it's also in Israel, by the way, were the enterprise local guys. Very, very hard to convert them, but we are looking for guys that are open to learn, Okay, smart, and they have aggressiveness in them. Okay, especially I'm talking about the the, the hunter. Okay, and uh, taking the transactional guy and validating can I move him into becoming a more strategic sales guy, and that's work that we do. Okay, so when we put uh, a sales guy in our teams uh, for the first three months, you work with one of our guys that, uh, uh, let's say I have Avi from my team, Avi built all the entire uh, team at Similar Web, if you know it, Clicktail, a lot of other uh, unicorns, and he works together with them. Okay, we have other guys in our group that really do that and really build that in those kind of uh, teams, and that's what we're doing right now in our companies, which we have to do. And I, again, but the problem is it's one by one by one. And it's not enough. And hopefully, again, we're thinking about doing something which is more machinery like we did in Israel, like more teaching. And maybe we'll be doing that next year here. I'm talking with Innova to see if maybe we'll do something together here. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to help a lot of sales guys to help our companies. And that's what we need here. But I can promise you one thing. If you in invest into it, you're going to be a millionaire out of it. Just that you understand one thing. Here in Israel, uh, here in uh, Poland, Nobody appreciates ESOP. Okay, you know why? It's the same thing that we had in Israel. ESOP is worth zero today. Nobody has done exits almost. Nobody's seen money. Do you know how many millionaires today, employees, millionaires I have in my companies? Not tens, not hundreds. We're talking about thousands of millionaires out of those companies. Okay, and these are guys that were very crucial in the beginning of the days of the company and joining in. And you know why? Because they came early days, they started to build it, they got ease up, okay? And those com companies became unicorn, okay? When you get an exit of $4 billion, a lot of people become millionaires out of it. So a sales guy today is a very important role today. We just don't, uh, don't have the right sales guys that we need in our companies. Uh, but if you're going to invest in learning and willing to do that, and hopefully a lot of sales guys will be doing it here, they're going to make a lot of money out of it. Okay. Uh, th thank you for all of the questions. And thank you, Ariel, uh, for pleasure. your fantastic presentation. Truly, <laughs> really, it was a pleasure. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me.